What's up guys, today I'm gonna to show you how you can build these trust badges or payment icons on your product page. There's also a version you can add on your cart page or anywhere really where you have the custom liquid block available in your theme or the custom liquid section. So you do need to be on Shopify 2.0 and you have to have this custom liquid block available where you can write code. So yes, we are gonna be writing some code for this tutorial, but you don't need to have any experience. This is not a video for developers. This is just for regular people, for business owners, and it's very basic HTML and CSS. And so it's kind of a two-in-one video. You'll learn a bit of HTML and CSS and you will get these trust badges on your store. If you have no interest in learning to code or you don't have time to watch the entire video, then you can get the code and notes for this tutorial from my gum road for $10. What you'll get is a PDF with the code, some very quick instructions for it, and then quite a detailed list of modifications that you can make to tweak it to your needs. In fact, even if you follow the tutorial video, then you still might want this file just as a quick summary. However, you don't have to buy it. If you have time, but not money, then just follow the video, learn, and you'll have everything completely for free. To write this code, we're not going to be using this because this is very small and it's just gonna be confusing. We're gonna be using a uh, kind of a code playground or an, an online editor called codepen.io. So simply go to codepen.io, you don't need to make an account, just click the start coding button and you'll see this kind of screen uh, where we can add HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We don't need JavaScript at all, so you can click here and minimize the JavaScript editor. And then I prefer to change the layout so that the code is on the side like this. And now I can move this around. The actual, you know, the front end view is gonna be here on the right. And I can move this around and make it look like it's on mobile or it's on desktop, right? So once we write the code in here, we're just gonna be copy and pasting it into the custom liquid block here. Uh, that's just gonna be a lot easier than writing it in here because here we have uh, code highlighting and you know, auto completion and things like that. It's a proper code editor. It's gonna be a lot easier for you to use. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. I hope you've already got CodePen set up and looking like mine. Um, let's have a look at the structure that we're creating in the first place because it's a lot easier to understand on the finished code here in the Chrome Inspector. If you've never seen this, by the way, you can just do this by right clicking and clicking inspect on any website and you can have a look at the code. So here is our code and as you can see, it's basically one container for all these trust badges called EC trust badges. And then there are three badges inside. We have this badge container and the badge container just contains an image and a paragraph. It's a very simple HTML structure. So we're gonna build that now and I'm gonna explain about these class names as well. So starting from scratch in CodePen, we're going to create a div, okay? And a div is closed like this. If you're completely new to HTML, a div is basically just a generic container. It doesn't really mean anything unlike paragraph, for example, or uh, image. For example, a div is just a container like a box or something. A div can have a class and a class is what you use to target it with CSS to apply styles to it. Okay, so let's for now call this badges and we're gonna have another div inside. And this div is going to be an individual badge. Okay, and we're gonna have some stuff in here. So this paragraph, I'm gonna put this in here and we're also gonna have an image tag, okay? By the way, make sure you line this up neatly so we can see, you know, what's inside of what, what's on which level, um, and you can do this using backspace and tab. So this is basically our structure and all we need to do to create another one is, for example, do this. And I'm using shift tab to like fix that up sometimes if it's if it's too far to the right. So that's our basic structure. And then with CSS, we can style that. Okay, so this is how it works. If it's your first time seeing CSS, we use the dot to mean it's a class and then we put badges 
and then these curly braces and inside here we can add the rules that we want so for example background red that would make it have a red background as you can see okay now the first thing that you want is to actually see something on the page because it's very hard to work on code without actually seeing anything so i'm going to just add our uh, you know dummy content you can add whatever you want here uh, and i'm also going to show you how you can add images whoops seems i didn't close this div correctly and let's make a third one okay so now we have three badges and as you can see they're in a vertical orientation right now and we're going to fix that up when we write our css but for now let's just write the html the next thing that we want is our images so inside image here we have a source that's what it looks like src equals and then quotation marks and inside the quotation marks you can put a url so basically to use an image in html you first need to upload it somewhere to the internet and luckily we can use the shopify files to upload our image so for whatever icons that you're using go to content and then files and simply upload your images and as you can see i've got my icons here and by clicking here we can copy the link and we can go back into our code and put that link into the image source like so and our image will show up it's going to be too large but we're going to fix that in css as well at a later stage for now let's just get all our images in here and at this stage our html is already almost complete we can now move on to the css and we'll just make some finishing touches on the html much later okay so quick intro to css classes they're like names for divs right first of all you can always put a class on a div just so that you the developer or other people understand what the purpose of that div is what it does and so this is badges or we could call it you know the badges container for example but badges is fine for me because it's in plural and i understand that it's a container and inside badges we have badge 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 okay so we have badges this is the entire container we also have badge and that's how i would style each individual badge so here if i went background red each badge would get a back i would get a red background and the next thing you need to know is that we can also style the children of a particular class that we target here by simply adding it on after a space so this would target the paragraph the text that's inside of the badge and uh, this would target the image why did i not put dots here why did i not put dots because these aren't classes they're the actual element name it's just a generic paragraph if i had done this this is dangerous don't do this because this will target all paragraphs across your entire website and you don't want that on the other hand this would only target paragraphs that are inside of the badge class so literally just this and that's it let's get started making this look a little bit nicer when i write css i don't go in with a specific plan or kind of order i just do the most obvious things first so the first thing to me that stands out is that the images are way too big so let's fix that i'm gonna put a width of 48 pixels onto each image and when you write rules in css this is a colon and this is a semicolon okay semicolon means that's the end of the rule whereas this would mean that something follows okay so don't don't mess that up don't put a colon here now i'm not going to use height because we actually don't need to do that images by default will scale down proportionally height will by default be auto okay so we only need one of these values either width or height and usually you would use width as for the actual value you might be wondering why i made this 48 i'm not sure no particular reason uh, you can do whatever looks good to you the only thing you should keep in mind is that your actual image file size should be at least twice this okay so your actual image file needs to be at least 96 pixels in width and like what i'm talking about is when you you know check the size of your actual image your icon mine is 289 pixels across so i'm fine here 
but make sure it's at least twice the size of the size that you actually are planning to display it on the page. And the reason for this is that that's how you make it look sharp on high resolution screens, like on Apple monitors. Okay, let's speed this tutorial up a bit. The next thing that I want to do is obviously line them all up. That's the next big thing that stands out to me. I'm gonna use Display Flex. This is a part of CSS called Flexbox, which is like a whole topic in itself. I can make an entire video about Flexbox and there are plenty of videos like that on the internet. The point is you don't need to understand it fully. Display Flex puts them all in a row like this. And you know what I'm actually gonna do is put a border on this entire div so that you can see what's going on. And I'm gonna put a border onto the individual badges as well in green so that you can see easily like what I'm thinking when I'm building this because I, I'm imagining everything as boxes, you know, because I'm experienced with this and um, that's how the internet is built. It's made up of these little boxes. So I hope these borders make it more visual for you. Now, what we want to do, what stands out to me now is that they're touching. So I'm gonna actually put some padding into each badge. So padding left and padding right, five pixels. So now that's a little bit better. The text is not gonna be touching. The contents of each badge are not gonna be touching. Next, I don't like that the icons are off to the side. That looks weird. So I am going to add text align center. And that's gonna center the icons to the text. Now the next thing that I want to do is probably put these in the center because we want them to keep to the center, don't we? Even though it's going to be inside of rather a narrow space, you don't want them moving to the left. So I'm gonna do this, justify content center. And this is a part of Flexbox. So here are some different variations you can do. If you want it to stay left aligned, you can use flex start. You can use flex end if you want it to go to the end or to the right. Um, and you can also use the value space between if you want them evenly spaced out with these gaps in between them. But this is gonna look a bit weird, won't it? Especially if it's like a wide area. I'm going to keep it as center for now. But the next thing that I'm noticing is that there are different widths. And the reason for that is that this word, this text worldwide shipping is wider than the other text. And I don't like the way that that looks. It looks a bit off balanced. Even if we remove those borders, something's gonna look wrong, right? Um, and so what I'm gonna do is add a width to each badge. And that width is going to be one third of its container. 33%. So that looks a lot nicer to me now. And our CSS is almost done. At this point, I would start moving it into Shopify just to see how it looks. We're not quite finished yet, uh, but I just wanna see that everything looks fine when we move it into Shopify. So add a custom liquid block to your page and we're going to copy in the HTML first and then we'll copy in the CSS, but we can't just copy it in like this. It needs to be in between style tags like this. So when you wanna include CSS in like the same file as your HTML, then you add these HTML style tags and inside of them, you can add your CSS. So now we're gonna copy all our CSS and paste that in. This is empty, of course, we haven't done anything yet. Yeah, we still got those borders, which we have to remove later. But as you can see, actually these borders are, are, are being weird. And why is that? It's because they're being affected by the CSS within our theme, by certain styles within our theme. You'll also notice that, for example, I did not add any styling for the text. And here it's like, it looks like Times New Roman or something. And then here on our site, it's, the same font as the rest of the site is using, which is what we want. That's exactly why I didn't, you know, add like a font family or anything um, here, because we want it to inherit the standard paragraph font of our theme. However, we don't want any weirdness. We don't want these, these rounded corners. I mean, you're only seeing this because I put the border on it temporarily, but what's happening here is that our theme already has 
a class called badge and it's being used somewhere but as you can see it's got all this styling on it I don't know exactly where it's being used inside dawn theme but dawn already has the badge class so we cannot use that class name this is a very important point to remember if you're going to be doing any sort of uh, Shopify coding on top of your theme in future you must avoid using the same class names as things in your theme if you're building something new I mean obviously if you're styling something that's already in your theme uh, then you would use that class to target it but if you're building something new and you don't want it influenced or influencing uh, anything that's existing within your theme you have to have unique class names and the easiest way to do that is by simply adding a little prefix onto your classes so this can be your name you know like I sometimes would do this ed badges ed badge like that in this case I use EC because it stands for ed codes you know um, if you're working on a certain shop it could be like the shop name or something like that it's just a quick and easy way to create a completely unique class like you you can be quite sure that there's nothing in the theme already existing named EC badge right so we're going to change it everywhere in the HTML and also in the CSS because obviously our you know our layout just broke because we changed the classes so now that's back to normal so now let's just copy and paste this back in again and see how that looks and this is kind of the process of how you write code for Shopify and and work on it and gradually improve it a little bit so now everything should be more or less normal I'm going to remove these borders for now because it's just distracting me at this stage so what do we think how does that look I think that the text is a bit too large so what we can do is change the font size to 14 pixels if you wanted to make it bold you could do font style sorry not font style font weight bold so that's a bit better or you can use if you know the actual weights that your site is using you can use the actual font weight so 300 is light 400 is regular um, 600 is semi bold and 700 is bold but that's if you know uh, that you have these available otherwise it'll just default to bold and regular you can also make it italic like so font style italic would make the font italic if you want to do that all right and now I want to briefly come back to the font family because I know that people will probably ask about this um, if you want to change the actual font of this text right if you don't want it to be this font but rather it may be the font that you have for headings then you can change that but you can't change it to any font that you want I recommend only changing it to uh, a font that you're already using within your theme definitely do not attempt to add an entirely new font just for this tiny little feature right because the performance hit is going to outweigh the actual benefit of having an entirely different font just for this you basically have a choice between using the uh, heading font that you have set and the body font that you have set and this is how I would do it first of all let's uh, inspect a heading so I'm going to right click click inspect to see what font the heading is you can also click on this little arrow here in uh, in Chrome inspector and hover and it'll tell you that the font is Avenir next we could type in Avenir next in the font family uh, but you might as well do it as the rest of your theme is doing it and that's using CSS variables so here we have the font family declaration and it's using a variable called font heading family and that's going to be a lot better because whenever you change the font heading family in this setting this variable is going to get updated and so if we use that then we're not hard coding Avenir next into our font family rule here we're just saying use whatever we're using for the heading font and as you can see the font has been updated 
at this stage we're almost done there are just a couple more things that i would clean up but first of all let's copy like changes that we made here let's copy them back into code pen because this is our project right here it's like easy to mess something up it's easy to kind of lose it i would like to keep everything in code pen and i save it i have an account on code pen it's free uh, but i just save my little code snippets here and i recommend if you make any changes here move them across into code pen so that this code is all the correct up-to-date code so now let's just take a look at the front end again to see what we would like to fix up maybe um, i noticed that paragraphs in my theme in dawn have a, a default margin this this orange that you can see is a margin top and margin bottom of 10 pixels and you can see that by clicking on computed here oh it's actually 14 pixels so if you click on computed in the chrome inspector uh, you can see the, the borders the paddings the margins and the size of the actual element itself and if you click on styles and you can actually click here to add a new style so i can write something like margin zero and that's going to cancel out those 14 pixel margins so i think that looks a bit better because i wanted uh, the text to be a bit closer to the icons so margin zero would cancel out all margins but if you wanted to keep you know the margin top as five pixels or something then do it like that sorry spell margin correctly and now you have a small margin at the top but nothing at the bottom however do not do this do not do margin five pixels uh, because this is going to place top and bottom margins, but also left and right margins, which you probably don't want. So either do margin top, margin bottom, or only use this margin shorthand if you want to put zero on all sides. Okay, I hope that makes sense. The same thing for padding, by the way. Keep in mind that padding zero, for example, affects all four sides. Whereas if you want to target a specific side, you can do padding top, padding bottom, padding left, padding right. And then finally, in your theme, you might not have any kind of spacing around the block itself. In Dawn here, any block that we add will automatically get a little bit of margin around it. So I'm quite happy with this. But in your theme, you might not have that. So I recommend doing something like margin top, 10 pixels, margin bottom, 10 pixels or once again you can make those paddings if you want them to be inside of the container now side note but important what's the difference between margins and paddings uh, the difference is that padding goes inside of the div and margin is outside of the div so you can kind of see that when you hover here but that's going to be easier to demonstrate with a border once again let's put a border one pixel solid red or whatever and you can see it demonstrated here as well the padding is inside of the div then we have a border and then we have the margin outside of the div another way you can think of it is that a margin is the space between elements whereas the padding is the space inside of an element and again any changes that i made here in the chrome inspector we don't want to lose this because by the way, if I refresh the page, I'm going to lose this. So don't refresh while you're doing this. Uh, but I'm going to copy this and paste it back into my main project. And I've already done this with these paddings here. And I've added comments for myself and for you guys. So the way to add a comment in CSS is to type a slash and then a star. And then you can write whatever you want as a note to yourself. And then close that comment by typing a star and a slash. And then as you can see here, the color has changed again to mean that I'm outside of the comment. And you can also write comments in HTML, by the way, just to, again, leave notes for yourself. Uh, but it's a different syntax. What we do here is a angle bracket and then an exclamation mark and then two dashes like this. And then we can write our comment and then two dashes and the angle bracket. So to close it, just you don't have the exclamation mark. This is very useful for yourself later, for other developers. Uh, you know, this is a must have skill, leaving comments in your code. And it's easy to comment something out as well if you want to, you don't want to delete something, but you want to see what 
it would look like without that thing, then you can comment it out by surrounding it with the comment syntax, like so. Um, but usually in editors like this, if you hold control or command slash, then you can toggle uh, commenting. So that's the way that you do it. Usually, you know, I could write myself a comment here and uh, then I just highlight it and command slash. At this stage, I think we're finished if all you want is three icons exactly like this. However, you probably want four or five columns or maybe less like two columns, right? So I'm going to show you how you can do that. Let me just copy this last badge div and create a new one so that we have four. And as you can see, they immediately fit. Uh, and that's because we have display flex. That's the magic of Flexbox. Even though we're setting the width of each badge to be 33%. So we should only fit three and the fourth one should like break somehow or stick outside of the container. It's still actually going to work because display flex tries to fit everything. So it tries to stay to 33%, but if it cannot, then uh, everything will fit. However, it's always best to just update that width uh, so that it actually makes sense. You know, four icons, 25% each, that adds up to 100%. If you're using this for payment icons rather than trust badges like this, then you probably don't need the text at all, right? So you can go ahead and delete all of those paragraphs. And we also now have this unnecessary CSS, right? So. If you don't have something in your HTML, then don't keep the CSS for it because you don't need this random code floating around. Delete that so that everything's nice and clean. You only have code for things that, you know, are actually being used. And I think that here with payment icons, since they're all going to be the same image size, um, then I think you can actually remove this width completely. And so now, they're just going to be the width of the image. And if all your images are the same width, they're all going to be the same width. And they've come closer together, as you can see, because we have that justify content center. If you have a lot of these payment icons, which I'm imagining like you sometimes do have 10 or more icons, you may want them to wrap around the next line. Um, like if there's not enough space, you don't want this to happen, do you? You don't want them to kind of just get cut off. Uh, so in that case, what we're going to do is on the parent container where we have display flex and the justify content, the rule that we can use is flex wrap wrap. Okay. And what that does is it wraps them around to the next line if they don't fit. And here again, you can have them centered like this. So this is line one. This is and these are the last two, they've, they've gone on to the next row and they're in the center. If you want, you can make that flex start. Sometimes it looks a bit nicer when it's left aligned. Lastly, I want to show you how I made these little background circles for the icons on the cart page. Uh, you can, of course, include the circle itself in the icon uh, if you're creating the icons in Photoshop or something like that but it's very easy to do with CSS and it's a nice little lesson. So let's do that. First of all, I want a background on the image itself, right? Not the actual badge because that's going to put a background behind the text as well. I just want it behind the image and the background uh, is going to be a hex code. You can use like a word as well, like gray, but usually uh, it's going to be a hex. I'm going to use hash EEE. -E. That's this light gray color um, and immediately I see that it's too close. I want a little bit of padding around it. So let's put a 10 pixel padding. Now the icons have some space to breathe. And then finally, what we can do is turn this square into a circle by using border radius. Border radius is a very useful feature of CSS, which you will see most often on buttons and it's used to create rounded corners. So if we put border radius five pixels or 10 pixels, as you can see, we got these rounded corners on the square. What we can also do is border radius 100% and it's rounding the corners so much that it becomes a circle, okay? Uh, that's generally how you create circles in CSS. And that's all there is to it. 
Keep in mind that for this to actually look good, you can't have a background on your image, right? What I'm using here are PNG images with transparency. If you're using JPEG images, then you're not gonna be able to do this because JPEG doesn't have transparency. If you're not sure about the difference between PNG and JPEG, I have a video on that. I'll link it somewhere in the description and you can check it out. Another issue you may have if you're using the this code inside of a full width section is that it's gonna to be too wide. So you might wanna put a max width this is what it looks like if I don't use a max width of 400 pixels. So each one, if you remember, is 33% and we have so much space, so they kind of spread out. Well, we don't want that. Maybe we want to contain them inside like a 400 pixel container. So we can do that with the CSS max width and we're just going to put that on the parent container. So trust badges, max width, say 400 pixels, like so. And as you can see, they go to the left and this isn't because of the icon alignment but rather the entire container has moved to the left because it doesn't take up the full width of the page anymore so in css to center something we often use this trick where we go margin left auto and we also do margin right auto and now it's centered and the way this works is that um, when you put an automatic margin it takes up all the space that is available. So if we do margin left auto, it knows that, okay, we have this much space available, the margin left is gonna be as much space as is available. Um, and when we do that to the margin right as well, then they equalize. That's all for today, guys. I hope that you've now built the trust badges and you have some skills to modify them. If you are a complete beginner to HTML and CSS, please let me know uh, your thoughts, anything that was confusing. Once again, you can get the code and the notes relating to this tutorial from my Gumroad for $10. It's like a little cheat sheet um, that you can use whenever you're building something like this and then you don't have to re-watch a half an hour video. Let me know, I'm really curious what you guys think about this kind of format, like where if I make a free tutorial, um, and then I release some notes for that tutorial, but the notes are paid and I'll try to keep them cheap, like 10 bucks or so. Uh, let me know like if this makes sense, if that brings value to you or not really. If this is a good idea, then I'm thinking next I'll do like an accordion tutorial. I don't know, I'm, I'm open to your suggestions. We gotta keep it simple because it's like beginner HTML and CSS. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you might wanna build. That's all, good luck and see you next time, bye.